Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to talk about Ohm's Law and power equations and how you can easily remember them. If you tinker with electronics you're probably going to need these equations. If you watch my channel you see I use them quite often. So they are pretty important in electronics. They are the foundation for more complicated mathematics in electronics as well. So knowing at least some of these formulas is pretty important, especially if you're going to get into the electronics hobby or even a career. Well, of course, you can download and print out or make wallpaper of this little circular chart that has all 12 formulas. But remembering them, I think, is important. So, you know, it's right there. You know, punch it up in the calculator or whatever and figure out what you need without having to resort to a chart or something like that. Well, first off, I need to define the variables I'm going to use. And I'm going to use the classical method. In other words, the variables that were used classically. And in that case, E was used for volts. E means electromotive force. So that's where that comes from. I for amperes. R for resistance. Sometimes omega symbol is used. And P for power in watts. So let's move on to the formulas and how to remember them. First off is this method here. Now I'm not particularly fond of them, but I'll go through it anyway. First with Ohm's Law. Well, let's say you're trying to solve for resistance. You have a voltage and a current. Well, this method here, you take E divided by I equals R. Or if you're trying to find current, you take E divided by R, the resistance, to find current. And if you're trying to find the voltage, you take I times R, and that gives you the voltage. Well, the one thing I don't like about this is it looks like the result for example, if you're trying to solve for R, E divided by I equals R, it looks like it's still in the, the denominator and you have to invert it. And it might confuse people who are more into mathematics. So it's just a simple learning aid, but you know, because of that, I'm not really fond of it. And, of course, the same for the power equations as well. Now, the way I like to remember... Ohm's Law is using this, but just write it out, simple math, E over I equals R. And these are algebraically interchangeable, so you can write it as E over R equals I. Always remember that voltage is on top here. So if you're trying to find R, of course I is going to be in the denominator. And if you're trying to find I, or current, the resistance will be in the denominator. And if you're trying to find E, or the voltage, it's just I times R. Or same difference, R times I. And to show how that works, you just multiply R on each side, and these cancel out. So it's I times R equals E. And the same is true for power equations. Just remember, power is on top. Just like voltage was on top over here, power is on top here. So to give you one example, power in watts divided by voltage equals current. And again, these can be exchanged. So P over I equals E. And E times I equals P. So right there, you already know half of the formulas. If you just remember that voltage is on top for Ohm's Law, and power is on top for the power equations. Okay, so now that we have half the chart down, what about the rest of it? Well, we have to deal with those pesky squares and square roots. But it's pretty easy as well. So if we know voltage and resistance, and we're trying to solve for power, it's this formula here. Again, 
voltage is on top easy to remember but because it's a power equation you know power is involved here we have to square that voltage so e squared over r is p and remember just like over here these are interchangeable so if you have the voltage and power you can calculate resistance so e squared over p is r and uh, right here e squared over p is r now if we have power and resistance and we're trying to find voltage it's a little bit different because it's squared so what happens is it's we'll take r multiply it on both sides these cancel out and because e squared over here we want to know what e is not e squared so we have to take the square root of both sides and that cancels the uh, the squared here so this just becomes e kind of messy so it ends up being that right there right there okay so that is three quarters of this chart now we'll wrap it up so the last three equations deal with power current and resistance and if you look here again it's power on top however we have to square current to find the resistance so that leads to one problem here we just can't flip-flop these that easy so let's try that so if we put power resistance but we have current squared over here because we flip-flopped them so what we have to do is take the square root of both sides and if we take the square root here we can cancel it because it's squared so we end up with this equation here and if we're trying to find power well we just multiply both sides by i squared those cancel out and we have i squared times r is power and i'll rewrite that so it's a little more clear i squared r equals power that's easy to remember because i always remember i squared r losses and cables because you're multiplying the current squared times the resistance to give you the loss in those cables last but not least let's make up a situation let's say you're trying to solve for power you have the voltage and resistance so what is the formula well of course that is the formula but let's say you forget what that formula is how can you solve for power then well let's say you remember the i squared r formula but again you you don't have i you have voltage well you can substitute i with its equivalent we know that e over r is equal to i so we can take it oh, what oh great i'm going to get interrupted by a cat yet again in another video so if e over r equals i we can just plug that in where i was and it's squared multiplied by r equals p so you just take your voltage over resistance square it then multiply that result by r and you got power so that's kind of a way to come up with an answer if you forget a formula you know you're doing a test or you're working on a project most people will just go to their phones and go on the internet and download the little circle chart here yeah i know people are going to do that but this is just if you want to know the formulas and how to do it well i hope this is of some use to you if you have a way of remembering these formulas certainly post them down in the comments well that's it thanks for watching what do you want what are you squeaking at me for <laughs> you just ate can't be food Oh, it's got an itch. <laughs>